good afternoon and, and thank you all for joining us and welcome to Beyond JMS. For those who don't know me, I'm Temple Northup. I'm the director of the School of Journalism and Media Studies here at SDSU. And I'm excited to have you join us uh, as we talk about Adobe Spark. For those joining us for the very first time, our Beyond JMS events are a platform for, for professionals to share valuable tips and insights about careers in the media or about skills to help you succeed either getting a job or once you do have that job. We hold them uh, uh, every Friday or many Fridays here at noon on Zoom, and then later we post them to YouTube. Before we begin, I'd like to take a moment for a land acknowledgement. A land acknowledgement is a formal statement that recognizes and respects indigenous peoples as traditional stewards of a given geographic area and the enduring relationship that exists between indigenous peoples and their ancestral territories. For San Diego State, we recognize the land as Kumeyaay, for millennia, the Kumeyaay people have been a part of this land. This land has nourished, healed, protected, and embraced them for generations in a relationship of balance and harmony. As members of the San Diego State community, we acknowledge this legacy. We promote this balance and harmony. We find inspiration from this land, the land of the Kumeyaay. I'm excited today to welcome one of our own faculty members, Dr. Nate Rodriguez, who uh, many of the students know as Dr. Nate. Dr. Nate is an Adobe champion uh, broadly here on campus, but then especially for our school. And so he's gonna be talking about Adobe Spark. And I asked him to do this because he's converted me to being an Adobe Spark advocate and champion because of its incredible potential. I've started using it for certain websites. I've used it to create uh, information about events and things like that. So there's so many different uses for it. And uh, he even pointed out that one of the students who won a Hearst Journalism Award last year used it. So I'm gonna drop um, in the chat uh, the link to just see that, that student's project. So it's a super powerful tool um, that creates just really beautiful websites and portfolios and, and all sorts of things. Uh, and it's not that hard to get competent at it. And so that's what Dr. Nate's here to just show you examples and talk to you about it. So let me turn things over to you and um, I'll uh, be monitoring chat. So if you have questions, throw them in there or the Q&A and uh, over to you, Dr. Nate. Thank you so much for that introduction and bienvenidos a todos. Dr. Nate here, pronounce he, him, el. And um, yes, I do like to advocate for Adobe and a lot of its products. I am the Adobe faculty fellow here at San Diego State University, but I started using Adobe way before that. Um, I'm going to share my screen with you and show you the... Um, the Spark site that I have created for this particular webinar, and Dr. Northup will share that with you also in the chat so that you can follow along with what I am talking about here. And so I thought, what is a better way to demonstrate Adobe Spark than to actually use Adobe Spark for this webinar? Um, I use Adobe Spark in my personal life to help brand and to promote my podcast, Sin Vergüenza. I also use it for different events that I am part of, speaking events, presentations at conferences, uh, organizing events and kind of showing the agenda and what's going on, as well as integrating it into the classes that I teach here at San Diego State University. So it's been used in our media studies capstone class, in our media and sexuality class. It's also being used in our Selena class, Cardi B and pop culture. So it can be used in a variety of classes. So today I wanna to give you a kind of quick rundown about why choose something like Adobe Spark to use for your personal branding, for your businesses, for your classes, for your student groups and organizations, or just to present your resume or your CV. Then I wanna show you a little bit of examples that I have gathered together for you. And then I also wanna show you how quickly and easy it is to make an Adobe Spark page. Um, Adobe Spark is also an Adobe application that you can use to create different types of media, social media posts as well as videos. And I'm not gonna take you through those steps today, uh, but just know that we do have training videos available with uh, SDSU ITS, as well as our um, Adobe Aztec Alliance, or just known as A3, where we create different types of training tools and videos to help 
of faculty, students, staff, actually just anybody uh, kind of go through the process of the Adobe application as well as the other applications that are part of the Adobe Creative Cloud. Uh, so if you are looking at this, um, Spark pages I made for you on your own or you're following along here on the webinar. I give you an introduction to our Beyond JMS webinar series that Dr. Northup uh, just presented to you minutes ago. You can also click this button here to go and find out about the other great webinars we have coming up and um, sign up for the emails to be alerted whenever we have things there. Um, something about me that I, I wanna, and there's a lot of information here on this page about you know who I am and why am I talking about this? Uh, but one thing that I want to kind of point out and it's, it's kind of always at the center of everything I do, is that I am a very interse intersectional person. I am brown, I am queer, I am first generation, I'm a professor, I am a very, very, um, I, I love binge watching television and pop culture and listening to music. Like that's a lot about who I am. I spent 13 years in radio working uh, professionally in all capacities. And because of that, I find that it's very hard for me to kind of separate a lot of the pop culture stuff from the teaching that I do and the service. And also very difficult for me to uh, separate the identity of who I am, that intersectional um, lived experiences that I have as being brown, first gen, um, and, and queer. And so because of that, I find that platforms like Spark give us an opportunity to create content that we often don't see ourselves represented in in the mainstream media. Um, and when I say mainstream media, I'm particularly talking about English speaking mainstream media here in the United States. Um, and so Spark really gives us an opportunity to create different types of web content uh, that we can then put a lot of different perspective in that we're missing out there. And then hopefully, as we start to kind of train our individual students here at the university level and send them out into the world to become professionals, that we start making that really impactful change at all levels in the media industry so that there are more content producers that are more intersectional and in not just their identities, but also in their intentions in the media that they create. So I really feel like Spark is one of those platforms that gives us the opportunity to create a little bit of a representation of ourselves that we often don't see out there, which is why I'm so drawn to using a platform like Spark in my classes, but also in my personal everyday lives. Also, it's affordable, it's relatively easy to use, and there's just a whole bunch of great things about that. And if you are a student or a staff member or a faculty member at San Diego State University, then you're gonna get it absolutely free. And when I say free, it's in all capacities. You're even gonna have a professional account or the upgrade to the pro account, which also gives you access to um, Adobe stock, which has lots of cool photos and stuff that you can integrate there too. For people who may not be part of the uh, Creative, Card, Creative Cloud Campus, or maybe you are um, having your own professional um, account with Adobe, then you can still access all the same functions. Uh, there's different levels to the pricing plans. You can get a basic free account with Adobe Spark, not the whole Adobe Creative Cloud, but just with Adobe Spark because it is one of their web-based applications, absolutely free. Now it does have limits on the types of pictures you can use, the type of templates, but it is free and it helps you create. And then I think the basic package is like $9.99 a month or something like that. So there's a lot of um, access there for individuals to be able to use this. Um, and if you're someone like myself who maybe isn't as versed in HTML or doesn't have maybe the funds to hire somebody professionally to do a website for you, or you're just fun and creative, Adobe Spark is, is a really great place for you. You'll see here on this page, I also give you some links to my social media accounts. So if you do have any questions or you want more information or whatever, you can uh, contact me on any of these. You can also listen to my podcast. Um, it is Latinx Heritage Month, so what better way than to binge the first seven seasons of that, just kind of, you know, shameless plug there for y'all. Um, so some more about why Adobe Spark, right? It's simple, it's instantaneous, it's web-based, it is something that you can then send a link to and anyone can, can look at it. Uh, one of the things that I like in terms of using Adobe Spark for my conference presentations is that it's kind of not just a slideshow that somebody sits there and watches and it goes away and somebody has to take notes or they'll send you an email and say, will you send, please send me your slides? Or maybe there's people in the audience because I've done this a lot of times too and I have my cell phone and I'm just taking pictures of the slides to try to remember it. But it gives uh, the opportunity for you to share some sort of tangible media artifact with the audience that they can then go back to and refer to what you were saying. You can give 
I feel a lot more credit to the different references and citations that you use in your conference presentations um, or your business presentations. And it's actually somebody that can, somebody can go back to your website, look at what you said, and they're not busy taking notes. They're not busy taking pictures and distracting the other people around them or you. Um, they're engaged with what you're doing and they can go back and see these different items later at their own leisure. I also like using it um, for events because people can follow along on their phones. They can get information that you want them to read without having to actually have a whole bunch of paper. So it's not as wasteful. Also in the COVID era, we really don't wanna be passing papers around or touching things. So it's really good to just have something that you can have tangible on a virtual platform like your phone, a tablet or a um, laptop. Um, and in terms of for the students, I think that there's a lot of learning opportunity here for students to be able to present information, taking it further than just a, a paper, right, a research paper that they have to write, and then you as a faculty member have to read, or the instructor, you have to read and grade, um, but it lets students present the exact same information that you would get in a research paper or a research project in a more visual, creative way. It, it stimulates more critical thinking. It engages them with different opportunities outside of just paper and pen or paper and, 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 and typing or a word processor, um, and so it really lets you um, meet the students where they're at. Students, of course, are actively on social media. They're actively on the internet. Um, and so they want to create things and they want to be um, visual about it. And, and intent, intentional is a big thing too for students right now is they want to create stuff that speaks to them. Um, and I feel like Adobe Spark and other Adobe applications is a great way to give them an assignment prompt or give them kind of an outline and give them parameters and then let them kind of go wild and create all the cool stuff. And I also find as cliche as it sounds that I learn a lot more from my students using these applications than I probably teach them. Because once I teach them kind of the basics of how to use Adobe Spark and stuff, they just go off and then come back and bring so much more to me. And the the creativity and the stuff that you can do um, with any type of virtual platform, right, is, is limitless. And I think that that's pretty great. Spark is also very accessible. So there's a lot of accessibility issues sometimes with websites and other virtual platforms for screen readers in particular. Uh, but Spark uh, and Adobe have found a way to kind of address that and make it a relatively a lot more smoother for screen readers. And I've created a button here for you to read more about the accessibility. So you can create social media posts, you can create web pages, you can create um, videos, you can put them all together and create synergy back and forth. If you are somebody who uses the other Adobe platforms like um, Lightroom and Photoshop, um, you are able to also create things in those different um, applications and then bring them into Spark. So there's a lot of synergy created with a lot of the Adobe Creative Cloud um, applications on here too. Now, that's not to say that Adobe Spark is perfect and great and everything and you should use it for all that you do. No, I think um, when we think of any type of technology and, and, and anything that we use, whether it's for business or, or for school or for personal use, right, there's going to be some benefits and there's also going to be some drawbacks. And I think one of the um, drawbacks for Adobe Spark is that it makes it so easy for you, that for, for you to use. That interface is so friendly that sometimes it takes away from a lot of the cool, intricate things that you could do using HTML. Um, so if you use HTML to build a website, you're going to be able to do crazy and, and a whole bunch of cool things, lots of bells and whistles on your website. And with Adobe Spark, it still looks cool and there's a lot of things you can do, but you can't take it as far as you could if you did HTML. So that's kind of the drawback to that. Other than that, I think it's a really great platform for you to use and a really great platform for you to be able to um, engage with. So I'm going to show you a couple of examples first, and then we're going to go in and see how to make um, different types of, of web pages using Adobe Spark. So you can look at this at your own leisure. You have the link to this Spark page, so you can click on these buttons here to take you to different spaces. But right here at San Diego State University, we are using it in a variety of ways across the departments. Uh, the Transfer Student Success Office, which is part of Faculty Advancement and Student Success, um, uses a Spark page, as you are seeing here, to promote itself and what it does for transfer student success. A uh, place for the land acknowledgement and you can actually click on over and see other different places that are uh, or the actual place where the land acknowledgement is hosted on our website and engage more um, with what we're doing in our commitment there to the premier. Um, you are also able to create different types of pictures, different types of events, um, more information here on COVID vaccines. So as you can see here, it's a very engaging picture, uh, but more than that, it's a flow of a lot of pictures. It's a flow of a lot of information. And as you scroll down, 
you see that there is a little bit of movement sometimes. There's so many different things that you can do to promote your organization, to promote your department, um, or to promote your personal brand. And I'll speak a little bit more uh, to branding specifically uh, when I show you the ins and outs of actual Adobe Spark. So I think this is a really, really great um, Spark page here that is created. And of course, you can put as much content as you want on here. You see that this is scrolling down and scrolling down. So kind of endless here in terms of what it is that you can um, do with this page. Um, another thing I want to show you is Tau Sigma, which is one of the academic um, honor societies that we have here. They also have a page um, that they are using with Spark. And as we see, as we scroll down, there is a variety of ways that you can uh, create the text, create the pictures, create different types of objects on here to make it basically cater to what it is that you want to do, what you want to highlight, and what you want to showcase. And so I think this is um, a really great example here of how San Diego State is using it, um, not just in teaching students, but actually in the organizations and departments and different, um, we call them academic units here at San Diego State University. And I love that, never stop learning because you should not either. You can also use it um, for personal pages and see the examples. Um, uh, let me go with this one first, name uh, stuck. Uh, uh, this is right here is a small startup. It is a creative company and this individual used Spark to kind of highlight not just what his company is and how to contact them and do all that stuff, but also what you can make and what he can make for you. He has his resume here on here, recommendations. Uh, you can go on over to his LinkedIn profile. Lots of branding here for himself and his company, but he's also selling himself. He's showing you examples of the different types of logos and brands that he has created for different companies out there. And you can scroll through this um, website. And I'm going rather quickly because I have a lot to show you. Uh, of course, you have the Spark page. So you can peruse this at your leisure. But he gives you a lot of demonstrations of what he can do as a company and what he can do for you. And he evidences it with all these cool um, different organizations and people that he has worked with too. So that is a good way to kind of showcase and highlight your specific brand or what it is that you're able to do and deliver to your customers. Should you use this for a business type of thing? Um, I thought, what if I had a resume and or, or CV? It's a curriculum vita and we call it CV for short in the academic world, but it's basically a CV is an academic resume, it highlights all the stuff you've done in teaching, research, and service. And so I thought, let me take my CV and put it on a Spark page and see what that would look like as a way to kind of showcase it and highlight it for you today. So that's what I did here is I created a Spark page that was all about me um, for a way to kind of present it. So if I was going, say, for a job talk or for an interview somewhere, um, and of course, because it's it, here in the last couple of years, we haven't been able to physically go anywhere. Everything's been virtual. You're able to, I think, present something a lot more engaging with the um, people that you're trying to impress for the job. You also give them a link, again, something tangible that they can go back and look at later. Uh, maybe you, you said or did something that stood out in your presentation. They want to go back and be like, okay, let me go ahead and check up on this. Um, or maybe they just want to verify that you are who you are. You, you're doing what you said you're doing in there. Um, and so I created this page as a way to evidence to y'all what you can do um, in regards to taking your resume or taking your CV and putting it in a um, digital format. And here I've included some pictures of me teaching. There's me here teaching in the digital uh, humanity center here at San Diego State University Love Library in the basement. I'm wearing my Selena shorts there. And as you can see on the right, I'm scrolling and scrolling. All this stuff is here about teaching, but that picture remains static. So there's some cool elements and engaging elements here visually and um, that you can use with Spark to get people to pay a little bit more attention to what you're talking about rather than just reading this long, my, I think my CV is like 16 pages. It's long, it's boring, it's redundant. And this I think is a little bit more um, interactive. Plus if it's something for like digital technology that you're applying for, or you're trying to apply for a job, maybe in the multimedia world, a lot of our students, right, are looking for jobs in broadcasting and public relations, advertising and other media industries. This also evidences to the people that you want an internship with or you want a job with that you are able to create multimedia. Um, as Dr. Northup said earlier, right, the last winner of the 2021 Multimedia Hearst Award used um, Spark as a way to evidence and, and do all that. So here's a way that I just kind of created um, this CV 
as a way to present not just the stuff I write about, but who I write about and the images that, that we often see on there too. So um, this is just a little example of that as well too. Um, and then down here, my service, part of the LGBTQ coalition here, which is part of San Diego Pride, um, all the service that I've done here. Um, and then down here, some of the media that I've created, right? So here's my podcast. I also have a link over to the podcast for people to listen to, an idea for another podcast that's coming out pretty soon, an idea for a cultural center right here. And then I thought, um, and this was really brought up to me because I have a friend named Desima Cooper who is absolutely amazing. She works for the city of Arlington. No, she works for the Arlington Convention and Visitors Bureau. She's pictured right here in the blue dress on the left picture. And then um, on the bottom pictures down here, you can see her riding a lot of the rides with us. This was back from my radio days when we used to go to Arlington. And I thought, if I want to find a way to tailor this particular site to a place I want to go work at, then Spark is also a great place to do that because then I can say, I can add at the bottom section, you know what, I want to add pictures of why Arlington would be a place that I want, would want to move to or want to be at, a way to kind of highlight the different things that connect me to Arlington. Um, they also have a radio station at UTA, so I thought, why not highlight that? So if I was going to go and work um, somewhere, I could easily just clone this website and then just change the bottom out to make it more tailored to that particular organization or business that I wanna be hired for. So students who are out there, maybe some that are student, the juniors and seniors, you're out there and looking for a job in the professional world. Spark, I think gives you an opportunity to not just highlight your skills, create a professional portfolio to showcase all the work that you have created, but it also gives you an opportunity to kind of tailor this website or web page to the job that you're looking for, to the job that you're applying for, right? Because even if you're writing a letter, as you should when you write a letter to any job, you don't want to make it general. You don't want to kind of just be very generic about it. You want to be very specific. I want to work with this person. This is what I want to do there. This is why I want to work at um, Fox 5 in San Diego. This is why I want to work for, uh, right, Channel 95Q. Like, these are the reasons why I want to be there. You need to tailor it specifically. And I think that Spark gives you um, that ability to do it too. Also, lots of different events that you can use. Um, I use Spark to create a web page for an event that we held with the Glenn Broom Center, which is housed here um, in the School of Journalism and Media Studies at San Diego State University. And as you can see here, as the webinar was happening, um, as we are doing now, um, I created a page that people could then find out more information about me as a presenter, but also look at all the different stuff that I was presenting to them um, in a more academic way and to kind of go back and read more on it as to why we should scrub our syllabus, which is make it more intentional to kind of uh, address the different inequities that we have in our student uh, populations, uh, include more intersectional content. This was a great way to kind of create different um, case studies, different um, ways that people, mainly instructors that were looking at this webinar, could go and use a lot of these pop culture examples. Again, I told you before, right, pop culture and everything that I do, um, to actually take it and use it right in their very own schools and classes. And what I love about Adobe Spark with their videos is that you can embed any video from Vimeo, from Spark, or from YouTube. And you don't actually have to go and copy the embed code or the HTML or anything. You just go and copy and paste the link at the very top and it'll automatically put it for you. Oh, that video is gone already. It will automatically embed it for you as a full video in your Spark page, making it so much easier for you. So I think that's also a really cool thing for there. So I have some other pages on here that you can look at for the different ways in which we are creating events um, and using Spark as a way to supplement the content for that event. We have a screening circle coming up on October 21st at the Tula Community Center, free for all of y'all to come and join us and watch the movie Moonlight. But this is the accompanying uh, Spark page that I created so that students and, and faculty and anybody who comes to see it, part of the community, right, can come and learn a little bit more about the movie, learn more about the theoretical concepts that we're gonna be talking about during the movie, like intersectionality, black masculinity. There's also some videos here embedded as you can see. So there's a lot of ways that you can use Spark to be a supplementary type of um, artifact that you can use for a variety of different things. And so this is just a way uh, to showcase some of the cool things that you can do using Adobe Spark, which I think is, is pretty, pretty cool there too. But you can look at that there too. Different um, 
conference examples here, project examples. Um, Dr. Uh, Northup already shared the um, Hearst Multimedia Award winning Spark with you. Um, this is a presentation that I created for one of the conferences we go to um, for the journalism and media studies profession. And I was just presenting about Chick-fil-A and Popeyes. And I was presenting on memes. And you have 10 minutes to talk about an entire study on memes without showing a lot of memes. And I wanted people to really look at what I was doing and, and show the memes to people. So Spark gave me an opportunity to create all the stuff that I did in that study, but also highlight a lot of the memes that I was talking about um, and how they were um, used in this particular, what were they calling it? The chicken war of 2015, the chicken sandwich war. So lots of stuff for you to go and, and peruse at your own um, leisure. I also included some resources here for you. If you're at San Diego State University, we do have the Adobe Aztec Alliance. We also have a SDSU Creative Cloud webpage that gives you information about the Creative Cloud and how to access it. Um, there is also Adobe Spark for Education. There is uh, the Adobe Education Exchange, specifically for those of you who are in education. And then the Adobe Creative Cloud eBook, which gives you a lot of information on how to access the different applications and how to use them um, for a variety of ways. And then you can also go to uh, the Adobe Creative Cloud YouTube page where there's a lot of training videos on there as well too. So I hope that this gives you a little bit of, of some tangible um, resources and examples that you can then go back and you can um, use in your own particular business, classroom, um, student group, or whatever you may be using it for. So I want to show you how to use Adobe Spark really, really quickly in the last portion of this webinar. And to access Adobe Spark, there's three ways you can do it. If you do have the Adobe Creative Cloud, if you're looking at my screen on the top corner up here, there is a little cloud icon. That is what you click on and it will take you to Adobe, um, all the applications, but it'll also take you to Adobe Spark. It is a web-based application. So you can always go to adobe.com, log on to your creative account, th account there, and then navigate over to Spark. Or again, web-based application, you can go directly to spark.adobe.com. Um, I've already logged in this before, so it automatically logged me in. But if you are a student or faculty member at a university that is a Creative Cloud campus, you do need to log in using your particular school ID. For San Diego State University students, you need to use your SDSU ID, which is basically your email. Um, be sure that you have set up your account in the Creative Cloud before you navigate over to any of the web-based applications, which are going to be stuff like Behance, Spark, Adobe Portfolio, before you start working in it. So be sure you have logged in, um, got, gone through the whole process, and I have the links for you in that other um, Spark page before you start doing that. So. When you get to this page, you see that Spark tries to make everything relatively easy for you to access. You can click anywhere with these different um, outlined images that you see on the top middle of the page. I'm making them bounce up and down. You can create different types of uh, social media posts that are already sized very specific to the social media platform that you are going to be using. And so they already have the size for you. They have lots of templates, something that you can go and, and look at. And that's going to be something that we cover in another training in another day, or you can follow the links to the Adobe Aztec Alliance. And we have training there for you from, Adobe, from um, SDSU ITS and from the Aztec Alliance as well too. You can also make videos as well too. Here on the left-hand side, you'll see there is a blue circle with a plus sign in it. When you select it, you can make a lot of these stories, but you see that there's a video and a web page there as well. This is where we would go to create that web page. But something that I want to talk about really quickly is the importance of having a brand. Um, you hear probably a lot of people talk about it. If you are in the profession right now, if you're on the in business, you already know how important it is to have a brand. And a brand is far more than just colors and your logo, right? It's your identity, it's who you are. It provides recognition. Uh, for you as a, an individual or as an organization or an entity. It sets you apart from your competition. It sets you apart from everyone else. You can use it to connect emotionally, specifically if you're using different types of uh, visuals like icons or pictures in it. Um, and it provides value. It creates kind of an image of who you are. So that next time people are looking for you or looking for um, a person that does that particular business or content, you are top of mind. And so creating a brand is very, very important. Creating a brand in terms of a logo 
is also sometimes very expensive. <laughs> so if you do not have the money, the funds, the time, um, and you are really wanting to use Adobe Spark right away and make a brand for your podcast, make a brand for your student organization, whatever that might be, there is an opportunity here in Adobe to create a brand for you. And it gives you the opportunity to make your own logo or to upload a logo if you already have it created somewhere else. And I'm gonna take you through that really, really quick. Right here on the left-hand side, you'll see that there is something that says brands. If you click on it, it will take you to the brands. Um, and there's a simple three-step process. And um, I will say this really quick before I get into this, because sometimes you'll see the little buffering circle um, that uh, comes on. Adobe Spark is a web-based application. So depending on your Wi-Fi speed, depending on the memory on your particular um, hardware, so your laptop, you can also download the Adobe Spark uh, mobile app and create from there. We'll determine how long it takes to upload and refresh and do sorts of things like that. So keep that in mind as you're seeing the little circle spinning. As you can see right here, I've already created all of these different brands on here. And so whenever I have a Spark page, that particular brand will, or that logo will come up and you can also pick colors that correspond to your brand so that everything is kind of branded in the content that you make. So I'm going to navigate back over to that page that um, I sent you, the Spark page. And you can see up here, as I move my mouse to the top, that Beyond JMS logo appears because it's branded. If I scroll all the way to the bottom of the page, that Beyond JMS logo is there. See, it's kind of hiding in the background because it's branded. And so if you want your particular logo to appear on your content, you can choose so. If you don't want it to appear, you can also turn it off and it won't appear either. You can also choose to have your picture, your name as who created it on there as well too. So lots of things you can do with these different types of Spark pages. So back to the branding. If you are logging on for the first time, you're not gonna have all of this. Obviously, you're just gonna have this outline square that says logo, create a brand. You click on it to create a brand. Again, Adobe Spark makes everything very intuitive. The interface is very friendly. Um, and so with it, you can do a lot of things in a relatively quick amount of time. So you see here, one, two, three, three steps. Upload your logo. If you want to upload your logo, you already have your logo, you can do so there too. If you don't have a logo, you can use Adobe Spark to create that logo. So if I hit skip this step, and, I don't, and this is one of those things about Adobe, it really should have make a logo here instead of skip this step, because watch what happens when I hit skip this step. Now it says try our logo maker. That's a two click process that's unnecessary. It should just say logo maker. If Adobe's watching listen out there, I think you should do that. Okay, so here you are, logo. If you want to create the logo maker, you click right there and it's gonna take you to a different screen. And it tells you to tell a Spark about what you're trying to make a logo for. Tell us three simple answers to three questions, right? So what business are you making? So maybe I'm going to do a gym. Maybe my, my business is a gym. I wanna start um, training out there. Like my buddy, Miles Davis was out there doing great things, being a personal trainer. He has his own business and, and web series and stuff. So maybe the gym is gonna be my gym business. The gym is gonna be called um, just maybe Nate's, Nate's Gym. And what is the slogan? Um, don't stop. I don't know. Create whatever slogan is if you want to. It's optional. You hit the next button, and now it's going to have four different styles for you to choose from. Decorative, modern, elegant, or bold. So maybe I want it to be bold because it's a gym. Once that is selected, it makes that square particularly bigger than the rest, and you hit next. And now it gives you some different icons to choose from. You, it automatically knows that you're doing gym because you put the word gym in there. So it gave me some gym icons or you can search for free icons on here too. So you kind of just look through here and find out something you want. Maybe this one looks cool. So I'm gonna choose that. And then I'm gonna scroll down here to the bottom and hit the blue button that says next. And now it just gives you a whole bunch of options. It shows all different variations of your name for the business, the logo, the icon you chose, um, the slogan, um, and it, different colors on here for you to kind of pick which one you like. And you don't necessarily have to go with any of these. You could choose one and change the color, change the placement, change all these, like, I like this one a lot. You can change whatever you want. So if I click on it, you will see that now it says, you know, you can change the color, the font, very immediate. So if I wanna hit color, it's just gonna randomly select different color combinations for me. If I hit font, it's going to do the same thing too. randomly select different font variations for me. 
So again, one of the ease of use, the, the friendly user interface of Spark. If I really want more control over this and I'm like, you know what, none of this is doing it for me. I want a very specific color, a very specific font. I just hit this button here on the right that says customize more. It will save the logo for me automatically and then let me start customizing that logo in the ways that I want. And so now you will see that, um, well, when it finally goes because the Wi-Fi here at San Diego State maybe isn't as quickly or as quick, you will see that now you're able to kind of go back and forth and change colors here. You're able to do animation if you want, change the background, resize it. On the left-hand side, there's more templates that you can choose from. You can also add text. So there's a lot of things that you can then go and change for this logo. And this is very much very similar to the Spark social media post. In fact, it is Spark social media post where you can go and create these different types of posts. But this is where you can go to create your different um, logos if you don't have one. You can go back here to the homepage and you will see that now I have this logo right here. So if I go back to brands, whatever logo I just created, I go back to create a brand. I can now upload that logo um, and create a brand new brand. So I'll go to upload your logo and maybe I will pick a logo that I already have created before which I really should have done this up front. Here, let's just do Scene Veduenza again. So that's my logo for my podcast. Now it tells you to pick your color. What I love about this is that when you hit pick your color and you upload your logo, it automatically sees what colors are there and lets you pick which one you want as your main color. So all of these colors come from my logo. This logo, by the way, also created in Adobe Spark. So maybe hot pink. I love hot pink hit save, that now becomes my main color. It shows you on the right-hand side, different ways that it's gonna look on the different content that you can create with Adobe Spark, the videos, the posts, the web pages. And then now you get to choose your fonts and it categorizes them for you, modern, plastic, clean, loud, natural, whatever you feel like using. I'm a relatively loud person, so let's go for one of the loud ones. I'm gonna choose, uh, Museo Slab. And now it shows you again what's happening here or what your font, your color, your logo is all going to look like. Once you have finished it, you click next. It'll tell you to name your brand. I would name this Sin Vergüenza, but since I'm just doing this as a demo, I'm going to hit demo so that I can know which one to delete later and not delete my actual brand um, that I have created here. And now it'll take you to a space where you can make more modifications if you want. You can add more logos, you can add more colors, you can add more fonts. It shows you the different variations of color schemes when you use this theme in the Adobe Spark webpage portion of this. It shows you how your logo is gonna appear as a header and footer in that webpage. It'll show you how the logo is gonna appear in different content that you make on the posts. Um, and then it's gonna show you the stamp, which is again, the way you brand a particular a video that you make here in Spark, and then the outro, which is another part of the Spark video. So you can make all of these different changes. Um, you can invite other people to collaborate with you. Maybe it's a group project that you're doing, or maybe you're doing this for one of your student organizations. You can then invite the other members of the organization to come and help edit and create this different brand for you, um, including the logo. And then once you are finished with that, you can either go back here with this back arrow, you can go home, with this home button, this SP that's at the top, once you hover over it, it turns into a house. All of that means back to your home page. And you'll see down here under recent projects, right? You have the ability to go back and do those different projects and change them to the theme that you had before or completely different. So, um, and now that statement might make a little bit more sense once I show you how to make the web page. I thought of that after the fact. So circle right here, plus, a web page, it's as simple as that. You are now creating a web page. And as you see up here at the very top, it has some settings, preview, present, and share. They're grayed out. You can't even start doing anything with that until you have something on your page, some type of content. And the very first thing that Adobe Spark wants you to make is to have a picture up here and a title. So you click on the gray area, it says photo. When you click photo, you now have all these options. You can upload a photo from your computer or your hard drive or your external drive. You can find free photos. If you do have the Adobe Pro account, which if you are part of San Diego State University, you do, you get Adobe stock for free. You can bring over stuff from your creative cloud, pictures from your Lightroom, 
Dropbox, Google Photos, Google Drive, it makes it so, so easy for you. Um, so let's just say I wanted a uh, picture back there and maybe we're gonna do something. I'm gonna pick Adobe Stock. And because this is for a podcast, I'm just gonna type the word podcast. And now it's gonna search for different pictures from Adobe Stock that have to do with podcasts. And as you see here, there is a variety of pictures you are able to use. If you don't have Adobe Stock, you can still use right here, find free photos and do podcasts. And as you read right here, it says that it's going to find some um, pictures from Pixabay, which is a Creative Commons um, area. You can peruse these pictures as well, find one that you like. When you click it, it'll appear here in the background. When you click on the picture again, you can change the focal point, replace it, or completely delete it. You click right here on the title and you will add the name of your whatever it is that you're doing. And the subtitle, maybe just a podcast for me or whatever your logo is. My, my, my slogan is unapologetically queer, unapologetically brown, but I don't want to type all that. So we're going to leave it. You scroll down a little bit more, and now you see as you scroll down, a menu pops up. And you can add a photo, text, buttons, videos, photo grids, slideshow, split layout, all of those cool things. But before I go into those and kind of show you what each of those does, on the right-hand side here, you'll see that there's a button that says themes, or it doesn't look like a button, but it is. When you click on it, themes will come up. Right here where it says LGBTQ, if I were to click on it, it's now going to bring up all of the brands that I have. Here's the demo brand that I just made. Here's all the other brands too that I have here. So you can make the content on here match the brand that you have. So I'm going to click demo and you're going to see that now the font's going to change and the color's going to change. And it tells me the brand themes. Do I want it light, medium, or dark? If I click medium, the background's going to be pink. If I click dark, it's going to be black with pink words. So here it gives you a choice of what you want to use. If you don't like any of these brands or you're not using a brand, Spark also has some pre-created themes already for you. And you can kind of scroll down through here and pick which one you like. This is Whimsy. Again, you see the color scheme change. You see the font change. Here's Vintage and everything changes, right? You get the idea. You click it, it changes. The drawback to this, well, let me go with the pros first. The pro is that it's very easy. All of these are already put together for you aesthetically. The font matches the color. Everything's already coordinated for you. You just have to choose one. That's the pro. The drawback to it though, is that say I do a click whimsy and I'm like, you know what? I like whimsy, but I like the color. I like the little icon down here, but I don't like the font. Too bad, you can't change the font. It's already prepackaged for you. So if you want a little bit more control over the font, the color and all that stuff, then create a, a, a brand. It doesn't have to be a brand with a logo, but it can be a brand that you just put different colors on and different fonts so that you can make it exactly what you want. Um, so that's the, the pros and cons of using um, the different kind of themes on here. So I'm gonna switch it back over to my Sin Vergüenza theme because I want the pink to be in the background. And then you just click the word themes again and it goes away. So now you can start adding content. If I hit text, you'll see that a text box comes up. Um, I'll just put test text on here. You see, oh no, the, the, the little menu went away. It's fine, just highlight the text, the menu comes back. There's some pre-selected options here for you. You can make it heading one, heading two. You can make it a quote, a bulleted list, a numbered list. You'll notice also that you can bold it. You can do all sorts of different content. Italicize it, you can add a link. If you have something that is just regular kind of paragraph form, your, or even if it's an H1 or H2, heading one, heading two, you can align it to the left, to the middle, to the right. You can click this circle down here again, add more text, right? And this might be a paragraph about your brand or about your product or about your student organization, right? Or about you as a person, as an individual, whatever you want that to be. Hit the button again and you can create something different. Maybe I want to add a photo here. So maybe I want to do another podcast photo. If I want to go from find free photos, I can still, it's going to automatically remember that that's where I was at before. Or I can hit this little arrow right here and go back to Adobe Stock, upload photo and so forth. So I'm just going to do free photos and I'm going to put a picture of this microphone. You now have the options. You can make this picture in line. You can fill the entire screen. You can make it a window so it kind of looks like it's just peeking through. 
the full width, which takes up the whole space. You can move it up and down. If you have more than one photo, you can replace it completely or you can delete it. So I'm just gonna leave it in line for the purpose of this. Now, as you're creating this, you'll see that in between each thing that you did, there is a circle and a plus. So you can always go back and add more content in between those things. So that's a good thing. Here's the video. You can add a video again. You just take that code from YouTube and you embed it here. So I can go to YouTube. Um, and let's see. Baruco's album just came out today. So maybe I want his song Pepas on there. So I'm gonna copy the link up here at the top. Again, you don't need the embed code. And you go back here and you just paste the link on there and you hit save. And now all of a sudden that video is automatically embedded there for you. So relatively easy, correct? Photo grid, you can add a whole bunch of photos and it's gonna be just that, a grid. You just choose a whole bunch of photos. And the more you choose, it automatically will um, create the grid for you based on the size of each photo. If you want to arrange the photos, you'll see that each photo you can click on and it has arrows to move forward or back. It has an ability to replace just that photo. You can make the photo larger or you can completely delete it. Once you're finished selecting your photos or uploading them, now you have a photo grid in the middle. Um, split layouts is just what it sounds like. You add an image on one side. We'll use her because she looks like she's having fun. And then here on the right side, you can add more content, more text, more photos, more buttons, more videos, whatever it is that you want to add here. So as you can see, it's just the exact same way that you're doing all of these things. And you're just building and creating and making the flow of what you want to present um, about your organization, product, brand, whatever that might be. Uh, the other thing is a glide show. The glide show lets you pick a couple of pictures. So let's pick him and her. And I don't think there's any more people uh, down here, maybe her. So once you pick the pictures that you want, you can click on each picture and order it in whatever fashion you want to make them, uh, to arrange the, the order of them. And once you hit glide show, you'll see that the picture appears as a full pace in the back. And as you scroll through it, it automatically changes to each picture. You also see that there is this purple box. You can add more content there. I don't know who this is, but we're just gonna put who is this? You can add another photo here. You can just keep building and building and making this really cool um, collection on this web page for you. When we get to this particular picture, we don't see her face. Maybe we wanna see her face. So we can click on that picture and hit focal point. And now on the right-hand side, it shows us that it's a portrait. So of course it's centering on what's in the middle of the portrait. We can click and drag this little circle that says drag to choose focal points up to her face so that her face is included in that picture. And now she's just like everyone else on here. You can adjust that on here. And you just keep going and layering and building and adding whatever you want. If you wanna create a button, you'll say what the button is. So maybe I'll say click here. And then you put that particular um, URL in there. So I'm gonna put www.sdsu.edu, just I know that works. And you can click, pick the alignment of the button. I'm gonna put it in the middle and hit save. And now that becomes a clickable, click, clickable button. It's a hard thing to say, especially on a Friday. And then right here, if you hit click here again, you can edit or you can delete. It's completely up to you. And now you just keep building. You can invite other people here to collaborate with you. You can do a lot of different things. You can also uh, preview it so you can see how it's gonna look whenever you show it. Again, because I have my brand selected, that brand logo comes up right there. And now I can go through it and see what it looks like outside of the edit mode to see what other people are gonna see once they get my um, particular link. You can present it. It takes up the entire screen if you push present. When you hit share, you can now publish it. You can print it out on a physical piece of paper, send it to Google Drive. Another way to invite, these two buttons are exactly the same. So when you publish it, here is where you name it. You pick a category. I'm gonna pick education. As you see here, it shows that I'm the author. I created it. I can toggle this on and off, whether I wanna show it or not. If I'm using photos that are from Adobe Stock, or from the find free photo feature, it automatically will do the free photo credits for me. I don't have to go back and add those photo credits because it's automatically there. Now, if I upload a photo, 
you definitely do want to give credit to the wonderful photographers that are out there that are creating really great images for this content um, or for your content. You don't just want to steal a picture from the internet or from someone else. Give them credit right here in photo credits. And then when you hit create link, again, depending on your Wi-Fi, depending on how much content you have on that page, how many images, how many videos, all that, it's uploading it to the internet will depend on how long it takes, which is usually between like 30 seconds and one minute. It's really not long. This one, as you saw, it took like 10 seconds. And now you have a shareable link. And this is what you're going to copy and share with everybody to look at your particular web page. You can also share it on Facebook, Twitter, Google Classrooms, Google Teams, email, or you can actually embed it in say something like another web page or Adobe portfolio. So you can actually take this and embed it in that and, and create this synergy again between all sorts of different platforms. So I know this was a relatively quick tutorial on just the web page portion of it. There is still Adobe Posts, there is still Adobe um, Movies, uh, or yeah, the movies, and you can still, or videos, not movies, uh, and you can still. Um, create so much different content on here as well too. Um, as you see, I have so much content that I have created on here. Here's a post that I created for my Cardi B class. I used it as a way to promote the course. Um, I don't want to request brand access because I deleted that brand. Uh, but you will see here that I was able to create this and it has movements. It has animation to it. And I can download it as a PNG or as I can download it as a movie file, uh, make it into a GIF. And this is what I can share on social media to say, hey, we have a new Cardi B class at the Honors College. Be sure you enroll um, and so forth. So lots of things that you can do with Adobe Spark. I did it relatively quickly. If you do need anything from me or need some more advice or some, some tips or you have a question, you can use this Spark page that you have access to. You can hit me up on Twitter, Instagram, my personal website. Go listen to my podcast if you want. Um, uh, yeah. Hopefully this will serve as a tangible artifact that you can go back to and look at the great examples that not just myself, but a lot of different entities and units here at San Diego State University have created and are using. Please, if you're a student, go and check out that first multimedia winning um, Spark page because it will give you a little bit more, I think, um, motivation and an example of what you can do. Uh, we are now taking, well, I shouldn't say we, because I don't work for Hearst, but the Hearst organization is taking um, applications and, and submissions for the 2021-2022 academic year. Um, so there's lots of things that you can use this for, resources galore. But now I'm just getting to the point where I am repeating myself. So that is my portion. I will leave a little bit of time now if anybody has any questions. Awesome. Thank you so much, Nate, for that amazing overview. And I want to, uh, I'm going to share my screen really quickly, then I know we do have a question um, okay. about uh, images. But let me just share this really quickly. So you should be looking at my screen now. Um, and I just mentioned this because you were showing all the uh, amazing things of, of creating this website is you like two weeks ago, we had a webinar looking at Canva which is another awesome um, online free tool. But Adobe Spark has pretty much all the things that Canva can do um, also as an option. So this is um, the Spark post. Um, and it's basically uh, like a more intuitive version of Photoshop, which they already did. So this is something I just made a few seconds ago um, while Nate was talking, um, just because I hadn't played around with it very much. But when you click on it, you can see like here are all the layers, this little pink flamingo I just dropped on there and I removed the, the background from it. If I wanted like the, the pink flamingo to be behind like the leaf, it's super easy just to drag layers around and things like that. So just want to mention that, you know, there's just a whole lot that Spark can do um and so you should definitely play around with it again it's free it's web-based so it's not gonna uh it's a little bit easier to use um than some of the the software you have to download there is one question i see uh, just asking about does it matter if you use high or low resolution images so you always want to use high resolution images whenever you're creating any kind of media content it just helps for clarity when you have different features on on spark that you can choose from. If you want to do something like the glide show where the pictures come up really big, 
you definitely want to use high resolution photos because if they're grainy or low resolution, when that glide show shows it really big, then it's, it's going to look distorted and it's not going to look very well. I think it's just a good practice to always use high res photos, but that doesn't mean that there's not a place on Spark for low res photos. You can always put photos in a much smaller space. Um, for example, if you're doing like a split layout, and instead of using the big picture to have your low res photo on the right where you can add text and videos and stuff, you can use little photos. Um, an example of that is when you go to the Spark page that I shared with y'all and you look at my picture uh, on the right side where it tells you a little bit about me, you'll see the JMS logo, you'll see the Digital Humanities logo, see the Wensa logo, and those are smaller spaces. So those would be okay for low resolution photos. But I think just in, in practice, you should always try to have um, good resolution in your photos. Awesome. Um, there was another question, which I don't know if you've ever played around with. I, I put a link in there for the person asking about how to navigate within the page if there's a way other than just scrolling. And I found a video on how to put like anchor links so you can sort of jump within the page. I don't know if you've ever done those. So because some of the pages can be really long if you have like your CV and it's 20 pages long of yes. scrolling through. I don't know if you've played around with, with ways to design the page well. Yeah, so again, right, the, I keep saying the word again, again, that's, that's okay. So when you do an Adobe Spark page, as I've mentioned before, there's a lot of great usability. The interface is friendly, so it's gonna give you good ways to manage it, but there's some drawbacks and this is one of them. And if you create like say a menu type of thing at the very top and you just have text that says, you know, research, teaching, whatever. After it's published, you have to do this after it's published. You go back and you take that particular link from your published web page, and then you go back into the editing side and you add that anchor link so that when people hit research, it automatically goes down to the research. But that's not something you can do until you've already published the page and then come back. So it's kind of a pain in the butt because it's, you know, two or three step process, but it is. The only thing that you'll be able to do though is to make those anchors where you can it'll take you automatically to parts of the page. But scrolling up and down is still kind of a way to engage with it. As you're scrolling though, you, of course you can stop and make pictures bigger. You can watch videos and do all those other types of engaging stuff as well. Awesome. Minchuan asks, um, do you know what happens to a page once you're no longer a student? Yes, so students have 90 days access to their Adobe accounts and to, when they graduate. They can then take that stuff and transfer it over to another account. What I have seen in my personal experience with students who have graduated is that content is still there until they delete it. So even if they don't have access to their account, say it, it lapsed in payment or they're just not using it, that content still stays there. Especially if you are sharing it with someone else, that content will be there. Now, if that student is no longer using it and they are the ones who created the page first and then shared it with you, you won't be able to edit it because they're not using it on their account. So basically the stuff stays there until you renew your account or move it to another Adobe account, which you're able to do as well. Awesome. Well, thank you so much um, for this amazing tutorial today. I just got my mind going. I've been sitting here playing along uh, as you went along. Um, I really appreciate you taking out the, the time of your day to, to show everybody some, just a small portion really, of, of what Adobe Spark can do. Yeah, of course. And thank you for the invitation. And if anyone needs any more information, you can contact me or the Adobe Aztec Alliance. Um, or maybe even Dr. Northup, because he has a lot of <laughs> knowledge, too, in this stuff as well. So, all right. Well, thank you again so much. Thank everybody for joining um, and have a wonderful Friday afternoon.